So we're here at the Sigma booth at PIX right now, and we're here with Patrick Santucci of Sigma. Patrick, welcome. Thanks for, thanks for being here. Um, so you got a lot of nice lenses here. Sigma makes a lot of nice lenses. Uh, we've seen an amazing um, set of lenses from Sigma in the last, I mean, what you guys have done in the last few years, five years or so, has been incredible with the art line of lenses. Um, they're just sharp. As, as anything, um, wonderful contrast, really great optical characteristics, very low chromatic aberration, great bokeh, uh, fast focus, and um, we want to help tell the story here actually because Sigma makes amazing lenses. So could you tell us a little bit about the philosophy behind the art lenses? Um, sure, I mean it's not just the art lenses, it's the contemporary line, it's the sport line. Um, but you know we've been at doing this since 1951, so a lot of it is years of experience and uh, dedication to just photography. We don't do printers, we don't do microscopes or anything like that. It's uh, just photography. Um, so a lot of dedication goes into creating these lenses. You know, we have a great design team and manufacturing team. Um, we're family owned in Japan, um, so we maintain a lot of that uh, in Japan. So all these lenses are made in house. We don't outsource except for a small amount of processes. Uh, keeps our quality control top notch. Um, we spend a lot of money on our on our factory and making sure that we provide lenses that uh, are gonna make you say wow when you go shoot with them. Um, so one thing, a question on everyone's minds. Um, so I just have to ask: Is uh, is so? Um, is sorry, is Sigma making and interested in making lenses for the FE mount because it's just such a you just can't answer that question, right? Okay. All right. Well. You know, one of one of my favorite new lenses actually is the 24 to 35 f2 because 24 and 35 millimeter primes are kind of my staple lenses for a lot of the photography I do uh, for candid portraiture, for weddings, engagements, family stuff, newborn stuff, and this basically puts those two primes uh, in one package. It's actually more than two primes because it also it's also got 28, right? So you got 24, 28, and 35 primes in one. Um, I usually just skip over 28, but it's it's great that you've got both of those because in fast paced scenarios you can rather than swapping lenses you just zoom out so um, it's, it's not really that this is a limited zoom lens it's more that it's uh, multiple primes so um, it's really amazing to see the quality of it because it is prime like sharpness um, across the frame and with that isolation of like f2 primes um, this is kind of funny I want to show this actually on, on camera we've got a 24 to 35 f2 adapted via a Metabones adapter to a Sony a7R2 and now the Sony a7R2 can actually autofocus third-party lenses and so one thing I always struggle with with primes is nailing focus um, because DSLRs have accuracy issues with uh, with focus and you have to manually choose the point what's um, the AF point what's great about this is because this is reading the image sensor it can automatically find faces and when it focuses on them, it's always accurate because it's on sensor phase detection. So what you'll see here is this lens on the A7R2 just automatically focusing on Patrick's face, um, no matter where he is on the frame, continuously focusing on him. And we'll just take a shot. Zoom up to 24. Take another shot. That's a 24 millimeter F2, and it's focused perfectly on his eye without me even really doing anything. I didn't have to choose my AF point. Um, the camera just automatically focused on it and nailed it. Which is just, it's kind of unprecedented for um, shooting F2, shooting wide open, um, just not worrying about focus. Um, so that's, I thought that was just really fun. Why don't we, um, now that I've geeked out about that, why don't we actually, take take a, a more in-depth look at your booth because you've got some fun stuff going on here. Yeah. Do you want to tell us about what's going on over there? Yeah, so, um, so right now we have uh, Dave Fitzsimmons. Uh, Dave is uh, one of our pros and he shoots uh, a lot of uh, nature and then animals. Uh, he has a series of books called Curious Critters. Uh, he uses uh, Sigma lenses and uh, the, the Foveon sensor as well for some of them. Uh, to shoot these uh, animals and educate people about uh, all sorts of animals, whether they're in your backyard or they're exotic. Um, so uh, I highly encourage you to look at their books. They're fascinating. The image quality out of them is just stellar. Um, so right now he's doing live demonstrations with, uh, we have some 10-day-old bunnies. We have uh, five-day-old chicks. Uh, we have uh, some snakes from uh, Brazil, I believe. And we also have some really creepy 
bugs, uh, like a, a cave spider from Tanzania. So um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's really cool stuff. So this is uh, this is David um, David Fitzsimmons, who is uh, here at the Sigma booth, um, and he and he photographs really interesting creatures in very very cool ways. So what do we have here? We have a very young bunny rabbit here that we've been putting in the light tent, doing high key curious critters photography, like the animals in my curious critters books. So we've had photographers coming trying out the Sigma lens, especially the Sigma macro lenses, and photographing them inside the light tents that you see back here. So we take the animals and we just place them right inside here. You can see a large rabbit right inside the booth here. And so inside the light tent, I'm going to move it over. So we've got a large rabbit in there and we have this little baby bunny here. It's really cute. So this is a lion head rabbit. It's got all kinds of mane that hangs off it, this loose fur. And so we've been photographing the baby rabbits, like the one in my hand, this large rabbit here, snakes and lizards, and we have a lot of fun. We've been showing people how great the Sigma lenses are. We're going to get in close to the rabbit here. This is a lion mane rabbit. And nice and close, and then uh, we're using F16 for a really small aperture, high depth of field, super bright lights at ISO 100 to 200. And you can see the little details of the hairs around the eyes. We're using a Lasolite cube light tent here. We've been shooting Sigma lenses. Today we're shooting a 24 millimeter to 105 millimeter macro, or zoom here. 24 to 35, excuse me, F2. And getting right in the front of the animal so you can see its face up close and personal from eye level. In my Curious Critters picture book series, I try to introduce kids to common animals, things like rabbits, and get them a chance to look them right in the eye. And so here we see. Yeah, it's, um, it's very cute. Never seen, wow, it's nice and sharp. Never seen this, you said it's a lion bunny? It's a lion, lion rabbit? head lion rabbit head. Okay. with that mane that looks like the mane on a rabbit, on a lion. And what's amazing, you take this uh, Sigma zoom here and zoom in and you see the amazing detail on the face, the hairs, on their eyes. I can. Um, I mean, this lens is incredible, but what's really cool is the versatility of this. I can actually use this lens on this body and just not worry about. It actually works. It's really fun. Um, let's see. So that's probably a little bright. Yeah. And if you'll play that uh, that playback for us. What I do is I watch for the highlight warnings, and if they're flashing around the subject, I'm happy because I've got all white around it. As long as the subject doesn't have any burned out areas, yeah, that makes true. me happy. Now, on an animal like this with a little bit of white, it's a little tricky because some of that white fur can burn out. But you can fix that in Photoshop by... I'm shooting raw. Right, exactly. So I do shoot in raw, then you can make some minor adjustments to the exposure levels and, and take a white dropper reading off the back white paper. So inside the cube light tent, I place a plastic sheet, and then we add a roll of 34-inch white paper to create a soft shadow underneath the animal. Some people wonder about whether the flash bothers the animals. But if you think about it, out in nature, people are seeing flashes of lightning, and so are the animals. And so they get pretty used to the, the flashes. It's pretty bright, though. Sometimes I wonder. Um, wow, that's pretty cool. It's very nice and sharp, and uh, there's not much in focus, even at f16, right? So yeah, you've got a yeah, they're so close, and I tend to use the crop sensor cameras with a little increased up the field. I shoot a lot with the Sigma SD1 Merrells, where I uh, get the the high megapixels and lots of depth of field. Cool. That's that's really fun, David. Thanks so much for um, joining us and for showing us your uh, your setup and your photography is really wonderful. So it's great to have you here. Thank you very much, and I'll show you the books here that we've made from this series. These are the Curious Critters picture books. They're available on Amazon, and all of these images were shot with Sigma lenses. Nice. Thanks so much, David. Appreciate it.